September 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Isaiah chapters 13 and 14 from the Old Testament. This is a message about Babylon that God revealed to Isaiah, son of Amoz. On a bare hill, raise a signal flag. Shout to them, wave your hand so they might enter the gates of the princes. I have given orders to my chosen soldiers. I have summoned the warriors through whom I will vent my anger, my boasting, arrogant ones. There is a loud noise on the mountains. It sounds like a large army. There is a great commotion among the kingdoms. Nations are being assembled. The Lord who commands armies is mustering forces for battle. They come from a distant land, from the horizon. It is the Lord with his instruments of judgment coming to destroy the whole earth. Wail, for the Lord's day of judgment is near. It comes with all the destructive power of the sovereign judge. For this reason all hands hang limp. Every human heart loses its courage. They panic. Cramps and pain seize hold of them like those of a woman who is straining to give birth. They look at one another in astonishment. Their faces are flushed red. Look, the Lord's day of judgment is coming. It is a day of cruelty and savage, raging anger, destroying the earth and annihilating its sinners. Indeed, the stars in the sky and their constellations no longer give out their light. The sun is darkened as soon as it rises, and the moon does not shine. I will punish the world for its evil, and wicked people for their sin. I will put an end to the pride of the insolent. I will bring down the arrogance of tyrants. I will make human beings more scarce than pure gold, and people more scarce than gold from Ophir. So I will shake the heavens, and the earth will shake loose from its foundation because of the fury of the Lord who commands armies in the day he vents his raging anger. Like a frightened gazelle or a sheep with no shepherd, each will turn toward home, each will run to his homeland. Everyone who is caught will be stabbed, everyone who is seized will die by the sword. Their children will be smashed to pieces before their very eyes. Their houses will be looted and their wives raped. Look, I am stirring up the Medes to attack them. They are not concerned about silver, nor are they interested in gold. Their arrows will cut young men to ribbons. They have no compassion on a person's offspring. They will not look with pity on children. Babylon, the most admirer of kingdoms, the Chaldean source of honor and pride, will be destroyed by God just as Sodom and Gomorrah were. No one will live there again. No one will ever reside there again. No Bedouin will camp there. No shepherds will rest their flocks there. Wild animals will rest there. The ruined houses will be full of hyenas. Ostriches will live there. Wild goats will skip among the ruins. Wild dogs will yip in her ruined fortresses. Jackals will yelp in the once splendid palaces. Her time is almost up. Her days will not be prolonged. The Lord will certainly have compassion on Jacob. He will again choose Israel as his special people and restore them to their land. Resident foreigners will join them and unite with the family of Jacob. Nations will take them and bring them back to their own place. Then the family of Jacob will make foreigners their servants as they settle in the Lord's land. They will make their captors captives and rule over the ones who oppress them. When the Lord gives you relief from your suffering and anxiety and from the hard labor which you were made to perform, you will taunt the king of Babylon with these words. Look how the oppressor has met his end. Hostility has ceased. The Lord has broken the club of the wicked, the scepter of rulers. It furiously struck down nations with unceasing blows it angrily ruled over nations, oppressing them without restraint. The whole earth rests and is quiet. They break out into song. The evergreens also rejoice over your demise, as do the cedars of Lebanon singing, Since you fell asleep, no woodsman comes up to chop us down. Sheol below is stirred up about you, ready to meet you when you arrive. It rouses the spirits of the dead for you, all the former leaders of the earth. It makes all the former kings of the nations rise from their thrones. All of them respond to you, saying, You too have become weak like us. You have become just like us. Your splendor has been brought down to Sheol, as well as the sound of your stringed instruments. You lie on a bed of maggots with a blanket of worms over you. 
Look how you have fallen from the sky, O shining one, son of the dawn. You have been cut down to the ground, O conqueror of the nations. You said to yourself, I will climb up to the sky. Above the stars of El I will set up my throne. I will rule on the mountains of assembly on the remote slopes of Zaphon. I will climb up to the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. But you were brought down to Sheol, to the remote slopes of the pit. Those who see you stare at you. They look at you carefully, thinking, Is this the man who shook the earth? The one who made kingdoms tremble? Is this the one who made the world like a desert, who ruined its cities, and refused to free his prisoners so they could return home? As for all the kings of the nations, all of them lie down in splendor, each in his own tomb. But you have been thrown out of your grave like a shoot that is thrown away. You lie among the slain, among those who have been slashed by the sword, among those headed for the stones of the pit, as if you were a mangled corpse. You will not be buried with them because you destroyed your land and killed your people. The offspring of the wicked will never be mentioned again. Prepare to execute his sons for the sins their ancestors have committed. They must not rise up and take possession of the earth or fill the surface of the world with cities. I will rise up against them, says the Lord who commands armies. I will blot out all remembrance of Babylon and destroy all her people including the offspring she produces, says the Lord. I will turn her into a place that is overrun with wild animals and covered with pools of stagnant water. I will get rid of her just as one sweeps away dirt with a broom, says the Lord who commands armies. The Lord who commands armies makes this solemn vow. Be sure of this, just as I have intended, so it will be. Just as I have planned, it will happen. I will break Assyria in my land. I will trample them underfoot on my hills. Their yoke will be removed from my people. The burden will be lifted from their shoulders. This is the plan I have devised for the whole earth. My hand is ready to strike all the nations. Indeed, the Lord who commands armies has a plan. And who can possibly frustrate it? His hand is ready to strike and who can possibly stop it? In the year King Ahaz died, this message was revealed. Don't be so happy, all you Philistines, just because the club that beat you has been broken. For a viper will grow out of the serpent's root, and its fruit will be a darting adder. The poor will graze in my pastures, the needy will rest securely. But I will kill your root by famine. It will put to death all your survivors. Wail, O city gate, cry out, O city Melt with fear, all you Philistines, for out of the north comes a cloud of smoke, and there are no stragglers in its ranks. How will they respond to the messengers of this nation? Indeed, the Lord has made Zion secure. The oppressed among his people will find safety in her. God, one of... One of my favorite things to do is to either look at pictures or actually go and visit places that have been destroyed, <clears throat> whether through fire or um, places that have closed or the owners just up and left and never returned to the place. I'm fascinated by these pictures and places that I've been able to visit, I guess for a lot of reasons, just the stark contrast to our live, vibrant world we live in. Um, that there's a different type of life that lives there. A lot of times if you listen really carefully, you can you can actually hear or sometimes see the wildlife in these broken down places. Uh, not laughing children, not joyful couples, uh, not traffic, uh, not <laughs> the sound of music, uh, but a more primal sound comes out of these places. The colors are also different and the artist in me finds that incredibly fascinating that our world gosh i'm just looking out my window right now our world is just filled with the most amazing colors today it's just the brightest eggshell robin's egg blue ever in the sky with great big huge fluffy white clouds and the the flowers are still blooming and they're purples and oranges and pinks and the bright different colors of green and in the leaves and just all these bright colors and when i see these places that have fallen to disarray 
all the colors are muted. It seems like all the colors are going back to a gray color, a smush of all of the other colors into just this generic, icky, grayish brown color. Um, and the the actual image itself seems to start to fade as well. Not the picture, but what is in the picture. As, as the item starts to crumble, whether it be a house or an old carnival or um, a, a warehouse type of building, old cars, they seem to start to crumble and go away. And as the colors kind of start to blend into the background, it becomes very much a ghost of its former self. Uh, it's it's hard to hear the music that could have been there or see some of the bright colors that could have been there um, and I, I don't know where my fascination comes from that maybe because i grew up in 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 little little tiny towns all over the northwest with my dad who was in the forest service and there was always tons of old house cabin things like that perhaps that's <laughs> that's where my fascination came from but reading this passage that isaiah writes about reminded me of that same thing where you're specifically in this passage talking about Babylon but also future arrogant nations where Babylon's going to be destroyed exactly like what I was just talking about where you won't hear music you won't hear laughter you won't see bright colors you won't see children you'll only be able to if you really pay attention see the overrun of nature within Babylon itself A and then it got me thinking God about where I live, where I specifically live, it's absolutely beautiful. It's gorgeous. Nothing is in decay. Nothing is falling down. Nothing is turning into gray, brown, smush of all colors. Everything is growing and vibrant and beautiful. And you definitely hear laughter. You definitely hear music. You definitely see your gloriousness as I look all around me in the place that you've allowed me to live. But then I think about the totality of us as a nation, as the United States, and in other big first world countries. Are we like Babylon? Sometimes I think we're worse than Babylon. Um, the extremes that we've taken, our arrogance, our wealth, our idols, um, sex isn't even defined in our society it just is and it's all over and and laws are being passed for approval of all sorts of varieties of things that you clearly talk about in the bible um, are wrong they're against the natural law that you set in place so god am i am i looking through maybe janelle's pink colored glasses is my little intimate world glorious I almost feel sometimes like I live in a version of Eden or a shade of Eden because it's what you have planted me in is just so beautiful and it's by your hand that all those things are beautiful but when I look at the totality of the country I live in it feels that way it feels like the decay it feels like the rundown buildings it feels like things are becoming a, a severe shadow of themselves it feels like, feels like everything's going to that gray brown color Definitely less laughter, less joy, a lot less music. Well, at least the type, <laughs> the type that you would want to listen to. God, it wouldn't surprise me. It shouldn't surprise anyone that you would do to us what you did to Babylon. It wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. And I know you may save a remnant from here. You also may allow those who are obedient to you here in the United States to perish with the others. Um, because that's your right and that's your choice and that's your form of justice and it makes sense to you in the totality of your glorification in this world and God I I would like to pray for the United States I'd like to pray for the world I'd like to pray for all of the arrogance and the idols and everything that we have corrupted in this world but it seems like a really big task. It seems overwhelming. It seems impossible. Yet there I go right back again to with you all things are possible. If you wanted any of this to change. If you wanted us on track to be a glorious society again. Who honors you and pleases you. I'm sure we would be back on that track. We would see... <laughs> We would see these incredible revivals that are filled with laughter and filled with joy. 
filled with music. But we don't, we don't see those. It doesn't surprise me in the slightest that the people who are end of times people are starting to talk louder and louder. It doesn't matter to me when you come. I kind of would like it to be in the next couple minutes. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me when you come because that is in your timing and only you know when that's going to happen. But it is hard to live here on this earth and watch people destroy something that you so beautifully created. What Eden was all those thousands and thousands of years ago. And have it be this gray brown shadow of itself that it's almost hard to find you sometimes in the midst of what we have made your planet what we have made the people you put on this planet even the destruction of of the crops and the animals that you put on this planet god if there if there is a chance i know that you know what to do with that chance I know that you can change anything you want to. And if it is your will that there is glorious revivals that happen here in the United States as well as all over the world, then allow them to happen. Your remnant will be there promoting, teaching, praying with, whatever we can do. Because with your strength, we will be the heart of that remnant. And your strength will be the revival. If that is not your will, God, then as we continue to watch destruction all around us and as it gets worse and worse, please provide us the strength and your armor to deal with what is going on around us. One, that we don't fall captive ourselves to the destruction, the fascination of the destruction the allure of the destruction and two that if there's an opportunity to help somebody who isn't caught in the middle of that destruction that we have the strength and the desire to help them with that you know it's so odd last night i had this strange dream that i was in the middle i was driving a car i was in the middle of an airfield and out of the sky, a great big, huge official looking black limo type of car fell out of the sky and crashed. Great big, huge firebomb. And then a couple space shuttles crashed around me and planes were crashing and there was fire everywhere. Kind of doesn't surprise me considering <laughs> the arrogance and the financial ruin and the sexuality promiscuousness that is all around us. That my dreams would be filled with that. God, whatever you want your remnant to do, please show us, please guide us. Allow us not to just settle into this world and become part of this severe shadow of the world that you created. Allow us to be alive, allow people to hear our laughter, which is your joy. Allow other people to see the brightness in our world. And to hear the music of our hearts that comes from a God who loves us beyond anything we can imagine. God, to many people, the United States is a country to be admired. And many people in America admire being an American citizen for all the wrong reasons. God, I want to be your child who's part of your kingdom. That is the world that I want to exist in. And whatever I can do to help this world here while I am still here, allow me to do that. So that anything that I do brings you glory. Thank you, God, for this beautiful world that you have given us. For the joy, for the laughter, for the music, for the brilliant colors that surround us. We thank you for that blessing until a time comes where that needs to change. And then we thank you for the strength to handle whatever comes after that. I know, as Isaiah says, our time is almost up. Our days will not be prolonged. 
allow your remnant to do what we need to do while we're still here on earth, God. Whatever that looks like. In your son's name I pray. Amen.